Hey guys, welcome to another video. In this video we are going to finish up the wiring. We did the ECU wiring, came out really, really nice. Now the last thing we have to do is do a relay board for this car. Now a relay board is really nice when you have a standalone ECU because you can simply uh, connect stuff on there and it'll give you high amperage outputs. Now here's all the wiring inside the car. We have tested it, it does work. But I made a relay panel that lives up here. However, the problem is it is a bit too close to the cubby because the cubby uh, bolts on here and then it actually touches all these wires. So I eyeballed it and it doesn't fit so I have to actually change the shape of the relay board. So we're going to take this one down and then just remake it so it fits better and then we'll put it back. But it is tested and I know it works. Okay, so I have the relay board out of the car. I used a piece of cardboard to work out exactly how much space we have down there. And then I draw it onto a new piece of plastic. This is just a plastic tray I got from a plastic shop. I'm going to take a grind and then cut out this exact shape. I've marked it where wires can't come in because there's brackets in these areas. And the problem with this one was because it was so much bigger, it was actually going over those brackets and then this thing couldn't sit flush. So I'm going to take all of these components off this board and then remount them onto this board after cutting this out of the grinder, of course. And then we may have to extend some wires. And we have our first sponsor. This is just a product sponsorship. I accepted this one just because it is something we really need and we're going to use it now. So I'll show you guys what we got. Okay, so they sent us an insulated terminal crimping plier, which is very nice because the one I was using was this one. And this one was extremely cheap. And as you can see, the jaws on it actually don't line up. So if you actually are crimping some of these things and you push it too hard, it'll actually twist in there and then break the casing off. And then you basically have to cut the wire and start over again. So this is actually really nice. We'll test it now. They also sent us this 120 piece insulated heat shrinkable Terminals. This is really nice. Anyway, yeah, I was looking at the one I bought and you buy these in separate little bags and it's like $2. So I think I probably spent about $20 just in buying little terminals from those small packets to make up all the stuff I need. So this is going to come in really handy. Okay, so this company is KFCP Tech and you can get this on Amazon for I believe $21 at the moment. We're going to test this now, however, it's definitely better than the one I have because like I said, this one, because the jaws don't line up, you actually have a 50-50% chance of destroying the terminal when you use this one. That's why I'm really glad they sent me this one. I'm now going to take a grinder and just cut out the shape out of this piece of plastic and then we'll start transferring everything. Okay guys, 10 minutes and a big pinch later, we have a perfectly cut out new relay panel to the exact size we need. It did make a bit of a mess, but it's not too bad. Okay, so now there isn't enough space on this side anymore, so we're gonna to have to move one of these relays to the other side because there's way more space on this side because we had to move these to the negative and positive to the corners just because with the previous setup this was further over so the positive wires from the battery was actually quite tight. Moving it over this way might resolve the issue of the positive wires being very tight. So I'm going to unplug this relay and then we're going to have four relays on this side, two on this side and then the bus bar will fit a bit better here. So everything is on the new relay board now. This board is quite a bit smaller. It is only about an inch wider, but for the most part, it's quite a bit smaller. So a lot of these wires, like this gray one, you guys can see it's uh, way too long now. So we're gonna have to shorten some of these wires. Also, I'm a little bit scared of these things touching. It doesn't look like they can touch, but if they do touch, you're gonna have a really bad day. So what I'm gonna do is use some of these insulated connectors, just because they have this insulated casing. So they actually won't be able to touch the other one. So I'm going to replace every second one just with one of these. And that will give us the perfect opportunity to test the tool we got. Now these are actually quite nice. They come in different sizes. We'll be using some of these. I think I might redo a whole bunch of them. 
these are actually also much thicker so if you look at the little connector itself and you look at the cheaper ones I have you'll actually see the thickness difference in them is quite a lot and I have noticed like these ones they do tend to wear out so I don't know if you guys can see how easy this can go on and off here so what I normally do is just bend these little ears close again to get them to fit tightly but these ones are way thicker so they probably won't have the problem of bending open now I'm also going to use some of this on my sticky sticky to just put in between these relays now what that will do is prevent them from being able to uh, move around like this and perhaps touch each other so I'm just going to stick some of it in between them and that's basically it once we're done I'll quickly go over how this relay board works because this is actually uh, quite an easy thing to do and once this is done and you have connected everything to this side you actually never have to worry about this again all you do is you connect the trigger in and automatically you'll have a power out also i have some fuses on this one so i bought this little fuse box the x6 fuses that's just to make sure that if there's a short somewhere it'll actually blow the fuse and not burn the whole car down okay so i'm actually recrimping all these wires just because you can see the new one we got actually crimps around the casing as well where the old one only had one crimp and it also tend to bend the clip as you guys can see this one is bent down so I'm recrimping all of them just to make sure they are crimped on here properly this one is a perfect crimp every time Okay, so this heat shrink actually appears to be sticky on the inside. It actually looks like it grabs onto the casing of the wire. Okay, well, there's definitely some sort of glue in here, which is really good because that means this stuff is sticking to this casing. So you'll probably never be able to get this out, which is good because now also this won't be able to short out between any of the other ones where obviously these ones that's been now cut off, they can obviously touch because they are exposed. So I'm very happy with these. These are really nice terminals. Also much stronger than the ones I have in terms of having to push them on yet. You can see it takes a bit more force these ones they just go on and off which can be a problem because if there were ever to be any force pulling on these some of these wires might come off luckily this relay board shouldn't have any forces acting on it it should just sit under the dash but you never know one of your passengers might get scared and actually kick the panel or something like that now on these ones because they are so thin i actually bend these little claws to slightly close so they slip on here much tighter. Only problem is if you now keep taking them in off, they'll actually start going loose again. Okay, so now we have the foam strip. I'm gonna cut pieces and then stick them to one side of the relays just so the relays can actually uh, go towards each other because that might potentially cause a short. Obviously we have the fuses, so if that happens, we'll just blow a fuse instead of burning the wiring. Okay, and here's the completed relay panel. I put some double-sided tape in here, just so these relays can't actually touch each other. It's not double-sided tape, it's just foam strips. But that does the job. Also, doesn't rattle, nothing's loose. So we're not gonna have rattles and stuff. 
Now let's quickly explain how a relay panel works. It's actually very easy. This is basically a switch that is controlled by a trigger. So you have your 12 volts from the battery coming in here. It goes into these little pins through the fuse box. And then it comes out here, goes to a relay, and then the relay supplies power to there. Now as soon as this gray wire, which goes to the relay as well, sees the 12 volt signal, it will trigger and connect the power from here to here. So power will go from here through the relay directly to the output. These are 40 amp relays, so I mean 40 amp is a lot of current. So if you need to run a cooling fan or something that draws a lot of current, it's really easy to do it with the relay panel. Now we are going to use these for number one is to start the trigger. So once you turn the key fully, we will trigger this relay. That will send a 12 volt signal to the starter to crank the engine. The next one is the O2 sensor that will be triggered by the ignition on. So once you turn the ignition to on, you trigger a 12 volt here and that sends 12 volt to the O2 sensor. It does draw quite a bit of power because it has a heating element and it has the gauge itself. That's why I'm running it off a relay. The next one is a engine power. So this specifically is for the coil. The ECU actually doesn't give coil power so you need to supply power to the coil itself. The ECU only supplies a signal when to spark, but it does not supply the power. So this one will be triggered with the ECU itself. The ECU will trigger the fuel pump relay, and the fuel pump relay will trigger this relay, which will give power to the coil itself. This one is going to be the fuel pump relay, but the ECU loom has a fuel pump relay in it, so for now we're not going to use this one. Now this one is wired a bit differently because this one is VTEC. Now as you guys can see, there's two wires coming out of here, and then these two wires go in and over here and here. So the trigger is always connected to 12 volts and the 12 volt in is also connected to 12 volts and then the gray trigger is actually earth. Because this ECU, the trigger is actually a negative signal. So what happens is I'll connect the negative signal here. That then earths the relay. So this relay is not being earthed to the earthing box over here. It gets earthed by the ECU and that then triggers the relay and it gives 12 volts. And I connect that to the VTEC solenoid and then that triggers the VTEC. So that converts a negative trigger into a positive trigger. Now for the cooling fan, we have this little fan controller thing. And this basically gives a 12 volt signal. So you can adjust this using this little turn thing here. But anyway, this is a fan controller. You adjust it to when you want the fans to come on. So you can have the engine run a bit cooler or have the fans come on a bit earlier with this thing. But what it does is it gives you a 12 volt signal once the fan must come on. Now because the car actually still used the OEM wiring loom and OEM fuse box for that, I need a negative signal here. So instead of actually connecting this relay to power, so when it triggers it sends power from here to the relay and to the output, it's going to connect to the earth. So what's going to happen is once I trigger it with a 12 volt, it'll trigger the relay which will connect to the negative instead of connecting to a power source. So that's how you can convert a positive signal to a negative. So these two are going to be a bit different. One gets a negative trigger, the one needs a positive trigger. So these two are going to be a bit different. These three are normal, just triggered by 12 volts. This one for now is not going to be used, so I just won't put a fuse in the holder here for number one, or whichever number this is, to be honest, I don't know. But I mean, once this all is set up, you have all these triggers here, and you just connect your wires on here. You have a trigger going in, and you have a high amp output going out. So you can run your fan from here, you can run your O2 sensors from here, you can run coil power, basically anything that needs power that gets triggered by the ECU or by a module or anything like that can be controlled with the relay board now. And once this is connected, you never have to touch this part of it again. You can just connect something here. If you want 12 volts, you connect your trigger here and you'll get 12 volts here. Okay guys, and there we go, we are all done. This one I marked V and this one I marked F. This is for the fan, this is for VTEC. So I know this is a negative trigger and a positive output. This is a positive trigger and a negative output. The rest of them are all positive triggers, positive outputs. Now, I did put some foam strips at the back so it won't rattle. This is where it's going to contact the car. I also cut off all the screw heads that was poking out on the other side. I'm going to put it in the car. Look it all up and then I'll show you guys how it looks. I would definitely recommend this tool. I'm going to link it in the description below. 
and I'm sure we can now throw away that one. Okay, so let me quickly show you guys how it works. So I have from the battery positive terminal, here you see the red wires, they go to the relay board. On the negative we have negative wires also going to the relay board. The separate ones go to the ECU directly. Now let's quickly look what's going on inside the car. So here we have the relay board, <coughs> fully connected. And as you guys can see at the back here, here's the wire straight from the battery. And here on this side, we have the black wires coming in directly from the battery as well. They all just connect to this bus bar. You can't see them because I also ground some of the other features here, like ECU triggers and stuff. They also ground to this point. So what I'm going to do is start the car and test if the relay board and all the outputs work as they should. There we go, everything is fine, everything is working, all the relays are doing what they're supposed to do. The whole interior is assembled again. As you guys can see, all the plastics at the bottom of the dash is back. The ECU is still on the floor because we have to get the car dyna tuned and we will need access to the ECU. So I'm going to leave it there for now. Once it's done, I'll put this plastic cover over here back and put that ECU behind that cover. But here's the car, everything works. Well, apart from something new that went wrong, but other than that, everything works. I'll see you on the next one. Please like, comment, subscribe. And thanks for watching.